Hello and welcome to another speaking lesson from the IELTS coach. Today we are going to look at some more part two speaking topics that are likely to be used in 2020, especially between January and June of 2020. So like with the other videos, I will show you three topics in a related category. So for the speaking part two, Usually the topics are related to describe a person, describe a place, describe an object, and describe an experience. Today we will be looking at describe a place. I will show you three examples that are likely to be used in upcoming exams. So let's look at the first one, which is describe a crowded place you went to. And we see the options there, or the things that you should talk about, where this place was, when you went there, why you went to this place, and say how you felt. Very noticeable here, notice the tense. Use the tense that they give you on the prompt card, okay, on the topic card, it's in the past. We'll see the other two topics that I've got are different tenses. So that's important, they give you this tense for a reason. They want to see that you can use the different tenses by giving you different tenses in the question. So part one will focus on a range of tenses. Part two might focus on one or two different tenses. So use the tense that they give you. Obviously, you're not going to talk about the future with this particular topic. Now, looking at it for describing a place, the, almost always the first prompt that they give you is where. So the location of the place. And we'll see that in the other examples. This means you should be comfortable with describing where something is. Where is the place? Where is the city? Where is the building? Where is your apartment? You need location language. And as I have said in the previous video, it's one question where this place was. Don't give one answer. Tell me three or four things about the location of that place. So where, where was this place? It was in my city. Where in your city? In the center of the city. Where in the center? Across the street from the main train station. Where is that in relation to your house? It's a 10 minute drive from my apartment. So not one answer. Show more location language. It's in, it's near, it's opposite, it's across from, it's far away, it's a walk, a drive, use location language. One question, not one answer. Give more details. You can see the second prompt, when you were there. So talking about time. Again, don't say one thing. I was there last year. What month? What season? For what reason? Okay, what? give more information. Don't be short and brief. You've got two minutes. You need three or four ideas for each bullet point, about 30 seconds, you can move on to the next one. Why you went to this place? Again, not just one reason. Why did you go there? Why not somewhere else? If it was a crowded restaurant, why that restaurant? It was recommended online. It was for my friend's birthday. It was somewhere new I wanted to try. It was give lots of reasons, justify your reason for going there and say how you felt. Not one feeling, try and give a few more. At first, I felt a little bit anxious because of so many people and I'm not comfortable in crowds. But once I met my friends, I felt more comfortable. So anxious, comfortable, worried, fearful, happy, excited, show feelings. That's what the question is asking and use the past tense. So the main piece of advice here, as with the previous one is, Give more than one answer for each of the questions. Give more details, show more language. That's what it's about. If we look at the next topic or the next prompt card here, describe a house or apartment you would like to live in. So again, the tense here has changed where this place would be, what this house or apartment would look like, who you would like to live there with, why you would, so you're going to use future forms. I would, I might, possibly, it could have this or it could be there. Not just would, 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 like in the questions, 
you can use alternatives. But you are talking about the future, not about the past. You might have one or two sentences in the past if you want to compare. I used to live in an apartment and I don't like it. So I would like to live in something else. But again, not one answer for each question. Give more details, especially for location. We can see again the location. Where would the apartment be? In the city. Where, where, where? More information. And the last one for describing a place that I have here that is likely or possible in the next few months is describe an important building in your hometown. Again, where it is, what it looks like, why it's important, what you like or dislike about it. So remember, it is still personal. This is often difficult for students because it's like choose a random building. And it doesn't matter which building you choose, as long as you give three or four answers about location, about appearance. Is it big or small, old or new, modern, clean, quiet, busy? Describe it. Get descriptive. That's what they want. The actual building doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be a real building. It doesn't need to be a real place. But you do need descriptions. You do need to show lots of language. And the other point I want to bring up, these prompts here, it says you should say. If you miss one of them, it's okay. You don't need to do any of them. But by following the prompts, it's easier to stay on topic. You don't want to change the topic. You can change the prompts but you must remain close to the main topic of describe a house you would like to live in. If you describe a company you would like to work for, that's completely different. You can't do that. And these prompts make it easier. Having three or four ideas for each of the bullet points makes it easier to hit that two minute time requirement. You can change them, you can move the prompts around, but it's just easier to follow them in order and to stay on topic. I do it because it's easy. You can still get a nine by following the prompts. You don't have to be changing things and it's best not to. So looking at another category for the speaking part two, describing a place, notice the similarities, notice we could be in different tenses. It's not always the same tense. Almost always they will have a location question and quite often a why question at the end but it's about giving more details, not just question, answer, question, answer, question, description. Give three or four answers, show more information. So I hope these three topics have helped you practice them, practice taking notes for each topic, practice speaking for two minutes on each topic, record yourself speaking and then listen and check yourself. You don't need feedback if that's hard to get, you can give yourself feedback. So three likely topics and it will be good practice. So if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next lesson. Thank you for watching.